Yes, my friend. Hey, how's it going, man? How are you? I'm very good. How are you? <laughs> good, man. Good. F finally got you on the podcast, man. I, I appreciate you taking the time, bro. Yeah, mate. It's been a long time. And um, I mean, the thing is, the problem probably was is because like those DMs, like you get so many messages, probably yeah. you too. So sometimes you just yeah. don't see messages. Yeah. And um, every time when new messages are coming, then the old messages, they just yeah. come like down and down. So yeah, yeah. but finally. I hear you. No worries. Glad to have you on, man. But yeah, if, if you could just, uh, you know, for the people who don't know you, uh, if you can just, you know, introduce yourself um where where you're at now and and what you're kind of looking at for the future and uh yeah we could get into it yeah okay so for all those who doesn't know me my name is brendan um like slash brandao and actually um yeah i like two years ago i started a youtube channel called uh, brandao where i tried to chase a professional contract in 365 days and it didn't work out and um yeah, and then I started the second season, didn't work out. Oh, no, it did actually. Um, signed my first professional contract in uh, Kidderminster in England after like, I think, 500 days of daily showing the grind and, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what I do, what I eat to actually achieve my dream. And at the moment, um, signed a professional contract in Romania for Panduri Targujiu. And uh, yeah, and, and we finished the season and uh, now we will see what's going to happen for next season. But I still have big things to achieve. So um, it's going up. The only way is up. The only way yeah, is up. Yeah, of course, mate. brother. Of course, brother. Of course. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, uh, l like we've spoken about before, I've made a video about you. I mean, um, what you do on YouTube, I don't think people see how, first of all, how tough it is from a mental standpoint putting yourself out there and being vulnerable and then being constantly, um, you know, criticized. Obviously you have a lot of support, but as we both know, you know, in today's media, there's also a lot of hate. So um, from those, from that vlog, from those 365 days, would you say that you really become uh, stronger mentally? Mate, Ricky, I tell you, um, without YouTube, like without the things that I've done, like actually showing my life in public, actually putting myself out there, I would have never become the person that I am now. Because unreal, obviously bro. at the beginning, when you start to um, like showcase yourselves, put yourself out there on the internet. I mean, at the beginning, at first, there's, I think I would say 100% just positive, trying people, trying to like um, support you and stuff. But as more people are watching and as more successful you get, the more hate you receive. Yeah. It's and interesting. for me, for me, it was so weird. Like I remember, um, obviously I did this every day on YouTube. And then the first dislike I got from a YouTube video yeah. where I saw oh, someone disliked my video. And I was like, oh, did I do something wrong? Like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> like, oh no, yeah. it's not good. But now it's just like, bro, people are disliking just because they want to dislike. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I understood, mm -hmm. I understood that like, there was a moment where I understood that people just want to hate because they want to hate because they are jealous exactly. or whatever. Exactly. There was a guy, I don't know if you've seen it, but in the French news, there was a guy, he was named um, Spider-Man because um, he saved a child by climbing up like... Um, like house, like balconies on the mm -hmm, seventh mm -hmm. floor or stuff wow. like this. And he has actually rescued a child. And after that, he got the French um, nationality and stuff like it was really, really big. This, this yeah. video has like 40 million views, but they are still, wow. I think, 6,000 dislikes. And That's I just crazy, think, man. why would you dislike a video like this if someone else rescues a child? And that's mm. the point when I realized that people just want to hate because they they don't like your success or whatever but me mm -hmm. doing all of this and getting all these hates and comments that saying you're not good enough you're this and that actually made me stronger 100 percent. i love that bro love that and, and and something that i always look at it like with um 
you know, I'm in the same boat, man. Like I, like when you post positive content and you, especially, you know, people see you day to day, they see your smile, they see your gratitude for life. How can they hate, man? That's, exactly. I ask myself that question too, you know? And I got it from Gary Vee, man. And it's so true. At the end of the day, you got to feel bad for the haters. You got to have empathy for the haters because something's going on with them inside. They see a guy putting out good content, trying to help the world for free, giving his time, his money for free. And they got to go hate. They got to spend time going on someone else's profile and hating instead of putting out positivity themselves or doing something positive for the world and themselves. So that's how I kind of look at it now. And I was in the same boat. Like when I first started, I was like, why are people hating? Like, you know, I'm trying to put out good content and help them with my knowledge and experience that I've worked hard for and they got to hate. But, it, you know, it's, yeah, it's empathy for them. Exactly. Exactly. And for me, the best response to hate is actually not hate, is love. So You're right. You're I, right. I realized... got to get better I with realized, that. I realized um, every single time when I had a DM saying, oh, Brendan, what are you doing? What are you doing, you, you monkey or whatever? Yeah, they actually insulted me. And when I actually yeah. replied to the message not with hate, with actually saying, listen, I know that you might be mad, but I still love you. And they were so shocked. And they were oh. like, oh, sorry. Um, I just did that to get your attention, but I love you and blah, blah, blah. Because otherwise, mm. I wouldn't know if you would reply. And yeah. Interesting. But no, I, I got to switch that. That's, that's a good way to go, man. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, just to get into your uh, career a little bit, um, you know, where did you grow up, your youth football, uh, your development overall, and then how did you make this move over, for the people who haven't seen your vlog, how did you make the move to Romania? Yeah, um, okay, so first of all, I started, um, obviously, when I was five, with playing football, like every kid do, yeah, when, when, they, when they play football. And a lot of people ask me always, why did I not play basketball? Because I'm six foot six, I'm quite tall um, as, uh, for a footballer. But the only reason why I don't, or I didn't play basketball, is because all my friends in my neighborhood they just played football. So why should I play basketball when all my friends played football? So that's why I played football mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I actually have like an interesting path because I played for Bayer Leverkusen Academy. I played for Hamburger SV, um, mm. the reserve team and stuff. So people actually might think for you, it's so easy to get a good club, but it was not because after I actually went to Israel, are you currently in Israel? No, I'm in Latvia right now. Oh, in Latvia. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after, after I went to Israel and then I had to go back to Germany because they were like this war between the Palestina and the yeah, Israelis. Yeah. Yeah, which and just happened now, man. It's exactly, crazy. exactly, crazy. which is which is just which is just happening now. Yeah. But because I thought with my CV with the clubs where I played, it's gonna be so easy to find a good club, and I always wanted to play in England because I have my cousin living there, and for me, England is football country number one, and it will always yeah. be. Yeah. It's not really because it's the best football, but it's just like fans, people are just so passionate. Yeah. 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 And when you see in this in the seventh division, there are like two, three thousand people in the seventh division. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. But yeah. when I went to England and I thought it's going to be so easy to find a club, but two, three months in me being in England, I couldn't find any club. I couldn't find mm. like anything and I was so like um, confused and that actually made me start to to um, do the YouTube to do the 365 challenge because mm. at this time there was a guy called Nick Humphries from Train Effective yep. Um, yep. who started who started like a hundred day challenge to a pro contract and I watched him every day and that actually inspired me to say listen what he can do I can do as well and yeah, and then I started this journey and then um, I went to Sweden. I went to all these places mm. and I tried to actually achieve my dream. 
didn't work out. Um, yeah, but then luckily, after like 500 days, I signed the contract for Kidderminster Harriers to play in the National League, mm. which was amazing. But then after, after having a couple of new managers of Kidderminster, there was this new manager, Jimmy Shan, I think was his name, who said, actually, listen, like, we don't need you. And uh, you can look for other clubs and you won't, mm. you won't play that much. So that made me um, start the All In Challenge on YouTube, where I said, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. And mm. I signed a pro contract, but now I have to look for another contract as well again. Well, well. So let me go all in. So let me actually sign for a first or second division team anywhere in the world. And Love then uh, what I did is on one day, I just Googled the cheapest flights to anywhere. Yeah. And because, on, yeah, because on flight search, you can do like, okay, like departure from London. And then when you don't know where you want to go, you just type in anywhere. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then I just yeah. did this. And then I found Romania ticket was just like 12 pounds and it's I so was cheap like, oh, in eastern wow. europe man <laughs> yeah but that's so cheap so I, I thought like oh wow let me let me go to romania i don't know yeah. anyone i've never been there in my life i'm tall i'm black i might be looked yeah. at like an alien but i don't care i just go so i just went and i was lucky like somehow i'm i'm lucky I would say I'm blessed, but I just Googled clubs and um, I knew that, okay, they are professionals, so they're going to train in the morning. So I went there in the morning and then I just asked, hi, my name is Brendan. I'm from this and that. I'm from England. I play there and there. Can I train? And then, uh, yeah, somehow I got the opportunity to for a trial. Oh, and real? then, uh, yeah, and then I signed a, a pro contract. Like, it's crazy. The yeah. second division. Yeah. And it's been a, like, crazy season but yeah that's that's how how i did it yeah i want to dive into two things there that i think are very inspiring for for people i think the first thing um no matter what you do um when you have a goal you know it's powerful to put it in your own journal in your own notebook and tell friends right but it's even more powerful to broadcast it and you say i'm going all in no matter what i'm going all in what is that it might put a lot of pressure on you but that pressure makes you better, you know, and, you know, some people might take it as stressful, but guys like you, they take it and they act on it. So I think something powerful that youngsters can hear in that is if you want to achieve something, don't just broadcast it to close friends and people who will say you can do it, you can do it. And like we spoke about in the beginning, broadcast it to the world, broadcast it to Facebook. I'm going to do this. I have this amount of time to get it done and get after it. And if, and if, you know, you're going to get hate, but that's part of it. And I think that's a, uh, you know, a major thing that I've gained from you is like you, the pressure that you've put on yourself is a good pressure. And it's someone yeah. just said pressure makes diamonds. It's exactly that. You can either look at stress in a positive way or a negative way. And, um, you know, the ability, you know, we've seen it in movies. We've seen it in movies and, and other documentaries. Oh, uh, people go to clubs and they ask to, to, to train. Um, people will always doubt it. And I'm sure, you know, you had people doubting you. I mean, but you just did it. And, and you took the action and look where you are now. Yeah. I and, mean, look, one, one very important part in that is... Because obviously people now who don't know me, they are listening to us right now and they actually think, oh, that's an interesting story. But like you said, like the whole story, you can actually just look it up because the, the journey itself is so hard and it was yes. so hard. Yes. But what made it a bit harder for myself is that every fucking, excuse my language, but every single day i took my phone out and i actually showed people showed the world what i do mm, every single day. so this whole journey i recorded it as well so like sometimes there were some days where i just thought like oh actually don't want to sp speak to anyone i don't want to 
put my phone out for sure. and, for sure. and explain people why I do this, why I do that. Because you have to explain constantly yourself why mm. you do this, why you do that. But why YouTube changed my life and why without YouTube, me personally, I think I wouldn't be able to do this is simply because when you put, like you said, when you declare something to your close friends or to the whole wide world is different. There's a pressure. Yeah. And I, I had this positive pressure because I knew that, listen, there are so many people watching, yeah? And on some days, you know, we all have those days where we wake yes. up and it's raining. We don't want to train. We just want to stay at home. We don't want to go to the gym. But because you are a public figure, because you said in the world, you're going to train, you're going to do this. So sometimes because of YouTube, because I knew that, okay, listen, I have to do this. Like I just did it. Yeah. I just did it because I knew that there are so many people watching. So mm. regardless of the hate and all these things, but actually those people who were watching made me did Unreal. things which wouldn't be possible. I think without, because at the moment now, for an, exa for, for an example, last week, just a random example, last week I was meant to train, but I didn't feel like training, so I didn't train. And because I'm not recording anything, so I just didn't train. But 100%, if I would record, if I would start vlogs, I would train. You see? So for me, really, like, YouTube just, just changed my life. No, it's, that's so powerful, man. And I think... Also, like the people who haven't been on the same type of journey that you've been on don't realize how hard it is. Yes. Uh, you know, I've been on the same type of journey you've been on, you know, yeah. wasn't a big player. I, I, I look for opportunities here and there. I'll do anything to get an opportunity. But and I've tried and, and this is a reason I respect you a ton. I, I think I'm a pretty hard worker. I'm mentally strong, but I couldn't do what you do, man. I could not do what you do day in and day out man and and that's why i respect it's all in the mind man your your mindset's unreal and people need to after this conversation they need to go watch your channel man because there were days you weren't getting any sleep there were days you were sleeping outside of uh hotels you didn't have you know sleeping in airports yeah and you weren't you weren't just you weren't just um getting uh feeling how hard it was inside you also showed the world that man it's yeah. so hard to feel shit inside mentally and still portray it for to help young guys and girls learn the importance not only in football but in life to if you want you always say it man if you believe anything is possible and dude you kept believing you kept you kept uh going and dude i mean your story and your continued story need, is an inspiration for anyone who wants to chase a goal. So I respect no. it a lot, man. No, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And like, because you said, like, I, I even get a bit emotional because um, like really, I imagine, it's, been, man. It's, it's been such a crazy journey. Yeah. And what most people just simply don't understand is that like, I mean, those, I mean, those hate comments and stuff, like those comments that say you would never be a pro is all right, yeah? But there are other comments where I just looked at them and they really hurt me, yeah? Mm. Because obviously, like you said, I was in countries. I, play, I slept in airports and I slept outside at, at stations and stuff like this. Like I traveled to Sweden with no money at all. Like, obviously, those are things... I don't want to sleep outside, yeah? I don't want to sleep at the airport just because, oh, I do YouTube, so it might be a bit entertaining to see me. Like, no, I don't want to do that. Of course I want to sleep in a bed. Of course I want to sleep somewhere where it's normal. Of course I want to have money to buy a, to, to sleep in a hotel. But, bro, this was real life. Like, this was my life. Yes. This was, yes. this, there, there was nothing acted this was me. Like, I didn't have money. I couldn't afford a hotel. I couldn't afford, like, um, things. Like, so that's why it just forced me to do things, right? And, yes. for example, because, I mean, some people, there are several people who do it now as well, like, trying to, 
do your challenge yeah. 365 challenge to your pro contract but they are not consistent they upload maybe every two weeks one time in a week but when you do it every single day and on some days of course some on some days they are just so boring you don't do anything you train but there there are no mm. even mm. there are no coaches calling you or stuff me going to work washing dishes like uh, me going to work cleaning other people's houses of course those are things that you don't want to put in public because yeah. you know your family is watching who knows who is watching like they might think oh he's uh, like that's that old and look what he's doing he's, he's cleaning dishes some others some others who are my age they are graduated in a university or whatever but bro this is my life right yes yeah and at the end i think what made me achieve all the things that i have achieved is probably my mindset but i think the most important thing is the most question i get asked is how do i stay motivated how do i get stay motivated for me my biggest motivation is my family is the way i grew up when you grew up the way i grew up with not a lot of money sometimes you don't know um, if you're going to have food and stuff this is the only motivation i don't need a motivation to wake up at mm. six and go to mm. training even oh, though yeah. i don't know like like if i'm going to get a trial or whatever it's just that listen i have a goal yeah and i want to help out my family one day and it doesn't matter what other people think of me because at the end yes. other people's opinion they don't pay your bills right so that's the only thing like if you have a goal if you really want to help out trust me you're going to be able to stay motivated for like a long long time for sure no and i think man what i heard in that and the first thing is like man you you got to have a why you got to have a purpose and it's got to be i get the question how can i find my why I can't help you find your why. You need to <laughs> dig deep inside. What is your purpose? I can't tell you what your why needs to be, what your purpose, because that's not your real why then. <laughs> yeah. and, and maybe it's hard to find your why and your purpose. Sit down, no phone, no bullshit. Sit in a blank room with a journal and discover your why and you'll find it, man. And, and, and also what I heard in that is I think – you know, you've probably played with pl many players. I've played with players who fan very talented, fantastic on, on the pitch, but they did not have the persistence that you oh, de yeah. demonstrated. They, they, first of all, I think a lot of players who are very talented, I talked about it with uh, the guy I had on yesterday. These academy guys, they grow up, they have everything, absolutely everything. Mm hmm they don't want to portray in the world and be looked down on others for working too hard. You know, um, they, they worry a lot about what people say, you know, but oh, yeah. guys like you who, and I think, you know, what it takes to become a pro footballer is that mindset, what you've done, what you've just said, your journey, no matter what 365 days. And, and we take it back to the beginning of the conversation, YouTube, you know, maybe it's you, maybe people view YouTube in a negative way or whatever they view it as. We can view it as a very positive way and a teaching for anyone who wants to achieve. Why? Because like you said, there, there are days you don't want to train. There are days you don't want to eat healthy. There are days you want to go out with your boys instead of waking up early. But what YouTube taught you is, no, I got to upload every single day. I laid this challenge on myself 365 days. Boom, I got to do it. And that's what it's all about. It's persistence, doing things you don't want to do no matter what. You might not see that, that light at the end of the tunnel. Like you said, you might not see the goal in mind. You might not see the trial. You might not, you know, people might ask you, what are you training for? And, and, and you, you know, people want to hear, oh, I have a big trial. Oh, I'm signing Yeah, here. wow, so good. Day, at the end of the day, it's the process, man. The oh, process yeah. is what makes you, man. Oh, that yeah. grind, bro, every single day. And yeah. I think grinding without having that promised goal is, is big, you know? Oh, yeah. Amen. Like you said that, it's so true. And this is where most 
talented, amazing footballers, they fail. As you said, we both played with amazing players, but when you, when you see them, their life now, what are they doing? They work as a construction worker, they work in a bank, whatever. Bro, there are so many unbelievable football players, but why are they not pros? Simply because they are just not prepared to sacrifice their life for football. Exactly. And this exactly. is what you need to do. If you want to become anything like football, a singer, like anything, really, you need to be able to sacrifice everything. You need mm -hmm. to be able to sleep in places, to share, to share a room with five, six people just to save a bit of money. You need to be able to travel to another country to be by yourself, to be not with your family for months, right? This is what you all have to sacrifice. But to answer your question, how can people discover their whys? This is a very common question I get as well. Like, how do I know my purpose in life? Like, the easiest way to know what you're meant to do in life is simply by, um, wait, is simply by seeing what do you enjoy doing? Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. my purpose in life, what I figured out is, I think my purpose in life is to inspire and motivate other people, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. for me, it is just so easy. It's so easy to take out my phone and to just speak to, to people, to motivate them, to inspire them. It's so yes. easy for me. So that's a talent of mine. Yes. And your talents means as well your purpose right if yes. it's if it's like players like cristiano messi it's just so easy to 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 play football like i mean it's it's obviously it's hard work but um like this is how you you figure yeah. out your purpose your what what you're meant to do in this world and Absolutely. Um, yeah so that's why like if you go through a tunnel if you really don't know what's going to happen at the end of this tunnel, all you have to think of is that at the end, at the end, there's always light. Always. What you mm -hmm. do is just always keep going. Always, no matter what. Mm. Unbelievable. Very well said. And I think also something that's not talked about enough is football teaches us about life. Oh yeah. Football football is not fair. Life yeah. is also not fair. Oh, You're not yeah. always going to get a fair chance. You're going to have people be against you because of your color, because of your race, where you grew up. But it, life is also and and obviously everyone's against racism, you know, but it's going to happen, but if you can keep going and and what what we, you said in the beginning what I wanted to also cover is it's good to be different, right? People, people might want to always fit in with the crowd, but what you do, you search for a place where you could be different. You go to Romania, maybe there's not many people who are as big as you, who look like you, and you stand out. And people always, you know, and it's tough to get those looks. You know, it's tough to, you know, get the look of like, what are you doing here? But I think you said in the beginning, man, you're always smiling. You know, you show the love, man. And how could you be rude to someone or hate someone when they show that love? Even if someone is trying to be, you know, hateful, deep inside they know, man, that guy, that guy just, just wants others to do well. He's a grateful guy. He wants to inspire others. And, man, like you said, you're wise to inspire and motivate others, and you do it through an avenue you love, man. And um, just like you said, I think that was gold. Exactly. So that's why for me, like one – biggest advice I have for people in general is to not always try to see mistakes in other people yeah try to sometimes as well just look at yourself and maybe you're doing something wrong yeah if people are always like I don't know if they always like hate you they 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 insult you and stuff like this like I mean try to look at maybe things that you're doing wrong. Maybe you, um, maybe you provoke something, yeah? And for me, the biggest example is there's a guy called uh, Sadhguru. Do you know Sadhguru? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Indian guy, like on That's YouTube, bro. he's, he's so such good, a man. wise man, right? And and this guy said something that just changed my whole perspective. It's like, look, we all know your nose is is very close to your mouth, right? Mm, mm, mm. It's very close to your mouth, as you yeah, can yeah. see. Yeah. But if me personally, if I haven't brushed my teeth for like three days, four days... <laughs> Other people are more likely to smell that, that I haven't brushed my teeth for three days. Even though that my own nose is so close <laughs> to my mouth, right? Yeah. But you yourself wouldn't realize it that much than other people. Mm. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that as people, we are so focused and we always look at other people's mistake. Yeah, we always look at other people's mistake. But bro, Try first to look at yourself. You mm. Because it's mm. so easy to look at other people's fault, but us ourselves, we think we are perfect, but we're not. And yes. as our nose, like, bro, if your mouth stinks, bro, your own nose doesn't smell it. So first try to <laughs> smell it your own. You understand what I mean? I love that. I love that, man. <laughs> class, nah, bro. these guys are unbelievable, bro. Dude, self-awareness is, is huge, man. Huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But... Also, what I wanted to get into, what, what uh, your take as well is, you know, I, I played in Germany um, for, for ah. you know, two, three years. I went there when I was younger, mm-hmm. um, played in the fifth league, good level. Um, yeah, Oberliga, right? And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I always wonder, just like you said from, from a couple minutes ago, we've seen so many talented players. And uh, I always wondered when I was like 19, 20, I, I wasn't experienced. You know, I didn't have as much experience in different leagues, different levels. I always said to myself, like, why isn't this guy playing at the next level? Why? And um, you said it there. Like, people are not willing to get out of their comfort zone and sacrifice. Like, dude, there are so many German footballers who were so talented, just unbelievable on the ball, so smart. But why, why didn't they want it? They wouldn't travel to a country like Romania. They wouldn't travel to a place like Hungary to play in the first league. Why? Because, you know, and admittedly, it is so hard to be away from friends, family, not speak your language, um, not have people around. And one of the hardest things and another reason that is huge, when you come home from a training and um, maybe you didn't have the best training or the best game, it's hard to look yourself in the mirror or just be alone and not speak to someone. Yes, you could FaceTime, but there's nothing like having someone else in person. So I think, like you said, man, being able to train your mind to get out of that comfort zone and whatever you do will prepare you for anything. And I'm sure you saw it a lot in Germany. Oh, yeah, mate. You, you said it like so good. I mean, there's nothing really to add to that, but it's just like... Look, if you're really trying to be professional, yeah, to, to go pro, all you have to know is that you have to work as hard as never before, right? But work smart. Don't work every day because it's a difference between hard work and smart work. Yes. Some yes. people, they work hard every day, but they don't really improve because they work on things that that i don't know like i don't yeah but you need to work as well smart right so you need to know okay listen like today i have to train this today i have to train that and also the amount of like hours you have to train is is it's just like it's how do you say it's um um oh mate my english bro it's like um because look i i'm sure you get so many in deutsch i might know it no i know i'm sure you get so many questions like how many hours should you work how many hours should i train per week bro it depends on you if you if you work yeah if you train for like 30 minutes but you have the feeling that you trained like 30 minutes like um really um, productive then Mm. 30 minutes it's all right but bro, yes. it just depends on you. You have to be smart. It's there's no there's no general formula exactly. Or like this is the amount of hours you have to work. Yes. Not exactly. At all. But you just have to be able to sacrifice everything. You just have to be able to mm-hmm. sacrifice being alone, to not have always good food, to 
to wake up early in the morning, to not go to bed that late, to scroll hours on social media and stuff like this, to mm -hmm. actually like miss a match or sleep late because you have a girlfriend that you yes. absolutely adore and stuff like this. Like if you want to be like mm -hmm. football, it's not, it's not that, that easy. Like it's, very, yeah, it's very not fast. for everyone. This but journey is not for everyone. Exactly. This journey is not for everyone. But I think through my example, what I want to say is like, if I can do it, you, anyone can do it. I mean, it, I don't want to say that I'm, I was that bad. Obviously, you need a bit of talent, obviously. But there's one formula that always works. Hard work beats talent. Always. Yes. 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 So, bro, if you work hard, trust me you're gonna be successful trust me if you're able and willing to travel to another country without waiting for other people to help you never yes. wait on other people bro yes never. yes There's yes so many people especially in football they're gonna say listen i will i will get you a trial there i will get you a trial there blah 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 and then people wait wait bro don't wait you have your two feet yes you have your passport you have your, your luggage, bro. Book a flight. Go to another country. Google mm -hmm. Amen. clubs. Go to, to their address. Show up. Ask them, listen, can I train with you? No. Go to another club. Ask them, can I train? No. Go to yeah. another club. Yes, you can. When they say yes, you can, you're going to have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And when you get the opportunity, you need to make sure, bro, that you smash it. Because otherwise, you can be as committed and as crazy but when you're not ready when they give you the opportunity and you and you're not good enough then bro then mm -hmm. it's your fault One, dude 100 percent. amen i mean dude people want things promised like, like i said before man they want a promised trial they want a promised position they want a contract saying oh you're gonna play 90 minutes every game no prove it every single day that you belong out there on the weekend um, and, and to add to what you said, man, like I always, I always say this and, and people could see this through your actions, like take responsibility of your own development. Oh, yes. take the risk. Once you take responsibility of your own development, you will be free. Oh, yes. you got to take care. You got to take care of your training, your technical work, your physical work, your nutrition, your sleep, your recovery, all those things. You, you are your own asset. I try to tell everyone this. In this game, you are your own asset. Don't rely on agents. Oh, don't yes. rely. Don't rely on friends. Don't rely on your parents. No, yes. it's you. Yes. You are your own product. It's like a business. You have a product. You want to sell it. What do you do when you want to sell a good product? You make it as good as possible. Oh, so yes. people want to buy it. So people want to invest in it. That's what wow. you got to look at yourself as, man. You wow. know, you got to look at yourself as, as an investment, man, and. <laughs> Like you said, man, you've got to be prepared for that opportunity when you get it. And, you know, that's why football is, is – is, this journey is so hard, man. Like, you got to be willing to go mentally, like, travel different countries. Get out of your comfort zone. But you also got to be prepared. Yes, you know? so, exactly. This is what I'm saying. You got to be prepared. Like, you and, – and what I've learned as well, one, like, really, some people – you know, some people, they – they might listen to us and they might say, okay, that's good. Like, who are they to tell me, bro, I'm telling you this. And this is so true. And always remember this. The biggest opportunities always, they always come when you least expect them. Yes, Every yeah. single time. And that has been that's in perfect. my life so, so much, bro the biggest opportunities always come when you least expect them. So that's yes. why it's so important to be ready at any time, at any exactly. time. There's no, there's no such thing that, okay, listen, it's summer now. So this might be the biggest opportunity because people are on preseason, they test players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be true, but like, bro, you always need to be ready at any time, at any time. Exactly. Exactly. No, I actually was just speaking to a friend the other day who said something exactly like that. He was in Germany, made the trip, was, was, was training for three months. You know, he had someone promise him a trial. 
didn't didn't get it, you know, uh, didn't have oh. to get an opportunity. He was out there for three months, you know, working hard, obviously disappointed. What happened? He he felt like he had nothing, so he stopped training for a couple of weeks. What happens? What happens a month after? He's got he's got two trial options. Bam. He's not. What happens then? He's not fit. Boom. Doesn't get it. Exactly. So, like you said there, man, like everyone, cliche sayings, people say saying, cliche sayings are cliche, but they work, man. That's why they're cliche. Oh, Be yeah. ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And, you know, man, I, I that's what it's all about. You got to be ready. That's how football is. You know, there's going to be times where no one's going to call you for five months. Exactly. A couple months later, you're going to have – three opportunities but if you haven't stayed fit if you haven't prepared yourself and been sharp then it's all waste you know exactly and i think also one very very common question do i need an agent to become a professional footballer no you don't need an agent you don't need an agent like you said you are a product like you want to sell yourself so all you need is a passport or whatever, you go into clubs and sell yourself. Mate, you don't need anyone to tell you that, okay, I will bring you there and there. Of course, I don't want to say that agents are not good. They are very helpful. And if mm -hmm. you have one, it's the better it is. But don't rely on anyone, really. Exactly. I, I get so emotional. It's just simply because I just want to show, I just want to tell people that they need to wake up. They need to wake up finally, like, Maybe there's one or two people who actually hear that, that actually like wait for an opportunity and they actually have an agent which they said, oh, I will call you tomorrow. They haven't called them and they actually are at the moment in their beds thinking, when is he going to call me? Bro, he's never going to call you. Don't wait on him, bro. Just go and look for yourself. Wake up, look for yourself. Don't, don't wait on other people, mate. So simple is that. So simple. Really, like... <laughs> 100%, dude. 100%. And, and, I, and I think, like, like you said, I mean, dude, like, the more people take, take it into their own hands and stop, you know, relying on others and, the, you know, the more opportunities they will get. And, and as we both know, I think the most important thing is, like I always tell younger guys who message me, wherever you go, no matter yeah. where you are, if, you, if you're in a, in a fourth league club in Belarus, for example, go there and be the best player there because you don't know if the guy, if his uncle is a coach of a first league team. You might go there and say, oh, this is some Sunday league BS. But if you go there and you show guys and you make true human connection, people always say, oh, how do you make connections? Boom. You'd be a real human. You'd be a real man, a real person. When you go to that trial, you'd be kind to everyone, shake everyone in the hand, how are you doing? And then you perform. And then at the end, you say, thanks for, for having me. You don't have to kiss up. Just be a, a real man. And then people will remember your name and maybe an opportunity will pop up. It's never exactly. guaranteed, but always being a good human and a kind guy and a hard worker, like you said, the hardest worker on that pitch being willing to take cones out, being willing to put the goals back, people are going to view you as a good, as a good person. And, and at the end of the day, that's who a coach wants in their team. You know, exactly. they want a, a good player on the pitch and an even better player in the locker room. Exactly. And this is, and because you mentioned fourth division in Belarus, for example, also, I feel like that's very, very important. So many footballers, they always think, like when they are, especially age 15, 16, 17, 18, right? At the moment, they are not in an academy. They don't play in an academy. Because so much people ask me, do I have to be in an academy to play foot, to, be, to, play, to become a pro? No. And if you, at the moment, play in a lower league, in a third division, fourth division, fifth division, even sixth division, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you might be on the bench right? Never think that, oh, I play in the third, fourth division. I'm not even playing. I'm on the bench. So how can I even think of playing first division in the Bundesliga? Bro, yes. let me tell you this. When I was in England, 
I signed for Killer Mr. Harriers, but like a couple months before, obviously it's all on YouTube, I was in the eighth division club. Can you imagine eighth division and I was not even in the squad? Mate, mm. I was not even in the squad because this manager just thought, listen, Brendan is not going to be in the squad today. So all I want to say is that football is just a game of opinions. Yes. It's just like never think that when you play in a lower league, you don't play, you sit on the bench. Bro, in, in one club, you can be on the bench, but two levels higher, you can be the captain of the team. And 100%. that's the reason why you always need to keep going and never be like, like disappointed or like give up and you want to quit football because you don't play bro this is a game mm. of opinions bro exactly is always keep going always yeah and, and that's why that's the that's the beauty of football man just like you said like you can you can go to a side and um you know you think that you're way above the level but you don't fit into the coach's system the coach doesn't think you fit into his formation, his system. He doesn't think he can use you well. So what does he do? He, he, he doesn't include you in the squad. But like you said, you can go somewhere else. It's a higher league, higher level, and you can fit into the system. Exactly. But, but also, like you said, something that I want to touch on is, um, and we've discussed this before, I think people look at numbers too much. You know, We discussed oh, this yeah. before the call. Oh, yes. My biggest mistake when I was young I came over to Germany when I was 19, did one year of school, and then I, I took, took a risk, started in the sixth league in Germany. And this is why I try to inspire as well, man, what I try to deliver in my content. I was too worried about what, what people were thinking of me back home. Oh, they, you know, they, you know, I was playing Division One NCAA in college, whatever. Then I moved to sixth league in Germany. They, people were saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? It's such a low level. But we both know at the end of the day, Fifth league Germany is, is a good level. You know, they play good football. But just because the number five is there, people say, oh, what are you doing playing fifth league? But if I, my biggest mistake, I was trying to rush up the league, man. I was like, oh, I'm 20 years old. I'm playing fifth league. You know, w w where am I going to be at next, you know? But I, I tried to keep rushing up the ladder and didn't enjoy the moment. And like I try to tell, like I said in this conversation, that, you know, I was – I had my faults and I try to help others not make the same mistake that I made. So wherever you're at, no matter where, if you're in the ninth league in Germany and you have the desire to get to the next level, be the best player every single training. And that's yeah. the beauty of Europe. Someone exactly. will see you. Someone will, if you're good enough and you believe you're good enough, someone will see you eventually. Maybe they won't see you. Oh, you're six games into the season. You're the best player every game in the ninth league. You say to yourself, damn, you know, Rick said someone would see me. Boom. Ne next game, seventh game, you're the best player in the field. There's a regional league, a fourth league coach there. We want to bring this guy in. He fits into our system. Exactly. This is, this is so true. Um, but one thing I want to say is that, I mean, you shouldn't really look at numbers like, you should be the best, really the best version that you can be at any level, ninth, tenth division. Try to be the best at training and stuff. But if you really want to achieve something, like you need to think big, yeah? And to think big, dream big, those are not slogans that people like, like, like you said, cliches that yeah, people yeah. just say it because the, they, they sound good. It's, it's true. Like you need to think big, right? To achieve big things. And if you, if you are playing the fifth division, like try to be really that type of person that really thinks big and that actually wants to play next season, the third division, second division. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, someone will, will see you. This is, this is kind of true that someone will see you, but sometimes they might not. And that's the reason why you can't wait on opportunities. Go yes. and get them. That's why I always say, go and get them because... I played so good in Germany, right? But I, but no one saw me. So mm -hmm. no one saw me. So that's why I was like, listen, no one sees me. So I need to, I need to put myself out there. So sometimes exactly. you need to take action. So sometimes you need to go to clubs. You need to do a highlight videos and 
put it out there on YouTube. And at the moment, what I would suggest anyone who really trying to be serious with football and who might not get the opportunity, bro, go to TikTok. TikTok is, yes, such a, yes, is, yes. is so crazy, yeah? Listen, oh at the God. moment, because me at the moment, I'm on TikTok as well. I'm recreating yeah. my 365 challenge, yeah? Uh -huh. Wow. And some people actually think it's, it's, it's happening at the moment, right? <laughs> wow. And can you imagine, listen, I just got, like, I think today in the morning, I just looked in my Instagram DMs and I just got a scholarship offer from like university and i'm like <laughs> what and i'm like what just because i did it on tiktok yeah. bro yeah. i i looked this person up everything bro it's it's real you understand i just got a scholarship offer to go to america because this person think that i'm actually going through the things at the yeah. moment and yeah. he doesn't know that i play professional but bro tiktok is such a growing platform so if you want to put yourself mm. out there go tiktok but mate just 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 dream big and do do whatever it needs to mm -hmm. and one thing i want to add to that you know to that what you just said is you got to make your own noise you know yes you gotta be you gotta be good enough but oh, you yeah. also gotta make your own noise because like we've said no one's gonna do it for you you got th that's why media is so powerful nowadays oh yeah you as good as you are as a player you also got to market yourself so that that's what it's all about you gotta market yourself Get highlights. Every every three games, make yourself a highlight clip. Put it on Twitter. Put it on LinkedIn. Put it on Facebook. Put it all over. Yeah. And, and that's what it's all about. Like you said, like, you have to, you know, like we've said in this conversation, you make yourself as good as you possibly can. Make yourself the best version and and enjoy the present. But you also, it, it's also being your, you know, Gary Vee always says it. You got to be your Gary own, v, by the way. Oh, I, dude, I love it. You got to be your own media that. company. Say again? Yeah, man. You got to be your own media company. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gary V is a guy I look up oh, to him. Dude. He taught me so many things that, that uh, you should never listen to other people. Like, like especially with social media. Yeah. So yes. many people, especially when you, don't have, um, when you don't have a lot of followers. Yeah. People are always concerned about other people's opinion. Like I got asked one time, Brendan, I would love to do a YouTube channel, do the same things that you did, but I'm worried what other people might think, especially my schoolmates, because I might get bullied and stuff. And they might think it's cringe. But listen, they might think it's cringe, but once you get more followers, once you get more people who are watching you, they will actually admire you and from yes. being cringe they will actually find it wow why did i for not sure. do it for sure so that's why bro you need to put yourself out there social media is so powerful in this mm. century like bro like without as i said without me being on social media i wouldn't be here having an interview with rick fit and <laughs> um like <laughs> So, yeah, well, it's, it's been a great conversation. And, and I want to add on to that. And then before I end off with a couple questions, um, just like you said, man, like the, the person he, he or she DM'd you um, and, and, and worries about what the friends will think. What I always thought from the beginning when I started my stuff and what I always tell people is it's going to weed out your real friend. It's going to weed out the real friends and the fakes. Oh, yeah. So you start. Like you said, maybe the first three years, you don't have any traction, nothing. You know, people are making fun of you. People that you thought were your friends. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Boom. Then when you, you know, become, get to the next level, then they're going to reach back out to you. And then, excuse my language, that's when you say, fuck you. you know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. But yeah, I mean, you know, excuse that crude language, but it's just that that's how it is. Like, you yeah, that's how to, it is. That's how it is, and there's no other words to um, to try to make it like like a bit rose. No, that's how it is. Like just if you if you that's why like show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are, bro. If you want to achieve something, you need to be surrounded by people who want the same thing. Who don't want to like like uh, say, oh no, let's go to a party. No, you need friends who actually say, listen, 
I would love you to come to our party, but you have a match tomorrow, so just go home. You need those kind of friends. Mm -hmm. Not say, no, no, yes, come, yes. just one day. No, you need kind of yes. friends that support you, that want you to succeed. Mm. Unbelievable. There's so much... You guys and girls need to re-listen to this conversation. I mean, there's been so much gold here. What you can learn from this guy, watching him, hearing him, please, please re-listen. Uh, I got one more question before we end off. If there's any age that you can go back to with the knowledge that you have today, is there is any age that you would go back to and tell yourself to do something differently, give yourself advice in some way? Oh, my days. I think if there's any age where I would go back is when I was 17. When I was 17, when I played youth Bundesliga for Troisdorf. And then after this season, like, um, I didn't know what to do. Maybe I, I um, like, I, I, I was not really that determined in my trainings and stuff like this. Like, I didn't train that much because I was thinking, oh, I played Bundesliga. It's good. Like, I don't need to train that much, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But I actually think, if I would go back, me being 17, with all the knowledge, commitment that I have now with my work rate, because my work rate, it might sound arrogant, but my work rate is just, un is, is just crazy. So mm -hmm. that you can imagine my work rate, bro. If I don't train one day, it feels yeah. like I haven't trained for a year. This yeah. is... I think I am kind of like sick, but I'm just so... But it's, it's good to be like that. Yeah. I'm so obsessed with, with success that I still think that me, sooner or later, I, I will play Europa League. Like Europa League or Champions League. And people 100%. will think, how did he get there? Because he's not that young anymore. But that's just my belief. I don't know. Something just tells me that. I always think of that. But... I, and mm. I will, but when I was 17, bro, with my, with my things that I know now, I think I would probably play somewhere like Chelsea or stuff. Like, seriously. <laughs> bro, Unreal. like... Unreal. Yeah. But what about you? Oh, man. I, when, I was, when I was 14, um, I, I stopped playing for two years, 14 to 16. Yeah, I was one of the better players in New York, one of the better players in the state. But I, but like I've been telling people in this conversation, like I try to tell them in the media, I cared too much what people thought. People were calling me a foot fairy in school. Why are you playing soccer? You're a foot fairy. You're a girl. I let it get to me, man. And and my my at that age, your brain is so malleable. It's so people can just influence you so hard, oh. and that's why I try to influence youngsters right now. I started playing American football for two years, man. <laughs> and yeah, and, and just at that, you know, what I would tell myself is just like you say, do what you love. If you love it, do it. And if I kept playing, if I was playing at that age, you, you don't know where I would be now. But I take that that drive and what I had learned and bring it into now. And I use that as, as fuel. Wow. So good. Yeah. So but bro, good. I don't want to lose this live. I think we only got an hour. Dude, it's been fantastic. To talk oh, to you. yeah. Yes, man, okay. dude. Yeah, we, we, we have to link up sometime soon in person, but dude, no, definitely. Uh, really, really great to have you. Um, but listen, are you, are, wow. you at, are you in Latvia at the moment? Latvia, Latvia. Oh, yeah. Dude, I signed a, here for the season. One of, one of my friends, he plays in the first division there for, um, yeah? I think, um, I don't know the name, like, his name is 